Lunch Money by Andrew Clements. Selection illustrated by Adam Gutzman. Standing in the cafeteria line, Greg opened his red plastic pencil case. He counted once, and then he counted again just to be sure. Then he grinned. There were 13 left. Sweet! That means I sold 17 units. That's what Greg called the comic books he'd been selling. Units. And selling 17 units before lunch was a new sales record. Greg's comic books weren't the kind for sale at stores. Regular comic books were sort of tall, also a little floppy. Not Greg's. Greg's comic books were about the size of a credit card, and they could stand up on one end all by themselves. They were only 16 pages long, and he could fit about 50 of them into his pencil case. These comic books were short and sturdy, and that's why they were called Chunky Comics. Greg loved that name. He had chosen it himself. He got to pick the name because he was the author of all the Chunky Comic stories. He had drawn all the pictures, too. And he was also the designer, the printer, and the binder. Plus, he was the marketing manager, the advertising director, and the entire sales force. Chunky Comics was a one-kid operation, and that one kid was Greg Kenton. Greg snapped the pencil case shut and grabbed a tray. He took a grilled cheese sandwich, a cup of carrot sticks, and then looked over the fruit cocktail bowls until he found one with three chunks of cherry. He got a chocolate milk from the cooler, and as he walked toward his seat, Greg did some mental math. Monday, the first day Chunky Comics had gone on sale, he had sold 12 units. Tuesday, 15 units. Wednesday, 18 units. And today, Thursday, he had already sold 17 units before lunch. So that was 62 units since Monday morning. And each little book sold for 25 cents. So the up-to-the-minute sales total for September 12th was $15.50. Greg knew why sales were increasing. Word of mouth. Kids had been telling other kids about his comic book. The cover illustration was powerful. The inside pictures were strong. And the story was loaded with action. The title was Crayon, Return of the Hunter. And it was Volume 1, Number 1 the very first of the Chunky Comics, so that made it a collector's item. Greg sat down at his regular lunch table next to Ted Kendall. Ted nodded and said hi, but Greg didn't hear him. Greg picked up his sandwich and took a big bite. He chewed the warm bread and the soft cheese, but he didn't taste a thing. Greg was still thinking about sales. Fifteen fifty in three and a half days, not so hot. Greg had set a sales goal for the first week, $25, which meant that he had to sell 100 units. It looked like he was going to fall short. The idea of making and selling comic books had hit Greg like a crack over the head from Superman himself. It made perfect sense. Candy and gum were against school rules, and tiny toys were boring and also against the rules. But how could he go wrong selling little books? School was all about books and reading. True, reading a comic book wasn't exactly the same as reading a regular book, but still, there was a rack of comics right in the kids' section at the public library downtown, and some new graphic novels, too. Comic books had been part of Greg's life forever, mostly because of his dad's collection. His dad's collection filled three shelves in the family room, and it was worth over $10,000. Once Greg had shown he knew how to take care of the comic books, he had been allowed to read and look at them all he wanted. Greg had even bought a few collectible comics of his own, mostly newer ones that weren't very expensive. It was his love of comic books that had first gotten Greg interested in drawing. Comics had led Greg to books like How to Draw Comic Book Villains, You Can Draw Superheroes, Make Your Own Comic Book Art, and draw the monsters we love to hate. Back in third grade, Greg had used his own money to buy India ink, dip pens, brushes, and paper at the art supply store, and drawing new comic book characters was one of his favorite things to do, when he wasn't earning money. The whole summer before sixth grade, Greg had worked toward the launch of Chunky Comics, 
From the start, he had felt pretty sure he could come up with a story idea, and he knew he would be able to do the drawings. But first, he'd had to deal with a lot of hows. How does a whole comic book get put together? How big should each be? How was he going to print them? How much would it cost him to make each one? And finally, how much money should he charge for his finished comic books, assuming he could actually make some? But one by one, Greg had found the answers. An encyclopedia article about printing books had helped a lot. It showed how pages of a book started as one large sheet of paper that gets folded in half several times. Each time the sheet is folded, the number of pages is doubled. So Greg took a piece of regular letter-sized paper and folded it in half three times the way it showed in the encyclopedia. That one piece of paper turned into a chunky little 16-page book, Chunky Comics. It was so simple. But not really. Greg figured out that making little comic books was a 10-step process. Number one. Write a story that can be told on 12 to 14 mini comic book pages. Number two, sketch, draw, ink, and then letter all 16 mini pages, which included the front and back covers. Number three, paste eight of the mini page drawings into their correct positions on a piece of paper to make master copy one, a sheet that can be copied again and again. Number four, paste up the other eight mini pages to make Master Copy 2. Number 5. Using a copier, print the images from Master Copy 1 onto one side of a press sheet, a piece of regular letter size paper. Number 6. Print Master Copy 2 onto the flip side of the press sheet, making 8 page images on the front and 8 on the back. Carefully fold the press sheet with the 16 copied mini pages on it. Number 8. Put in two staples along the crease at the very center of the little book, between pages 8 and 9. Number 9. Trim the three unstapled edges, and that makes one finished mini comic book. Number 10. Repeat. And each of the 10 steps had to be done perfectly, or no one would ever want to spend money on his little comics. After all the howls had been settled, then came the writing. But Greg hadn't written just one story. He had developed a master publishing plan. Volume 1 was going to be about Creon, an incredibly intelligent Stone Age hero who helped his tribe deal with ancient dangers, like prehistoric beasts and Cro-Magnum marauders. Greg figured there could be seven or eight issues about Creon. Chunky Comics Volume 2 would feature the future, where a superhero named Eon tried to protect a small colony of humans living in a world of melting ice caps and mutant life forms that were part human, part toxic sludge, and part recycled trucks and airplanes. Again, there would be seven or eight issues featuring Eon. Then Chunky Comics Volume 3 would feature Leon a fairly normal modern age techno dude who suddenly finds himself energized when his digital atomic watch overheats and burns its circuits into the nerves on his wrists. Leon learns that the watch can be set for the future or the past. The six or seven time travel adventures of Volume 3 would follow Leon to the past, where he would team up with Creon, and then to the future, where he would offer his services to the amazing Eon. And eventually, all three characters would have some final episodes together. Creon, Leon, and Eon. Past, present, and future. Once the master plan was set, writing the first Creon story, Return of the Hunter, had been pretty easy for Greg. But the drawing was more difficult than he thought it would be. It had taken a long time to get each small page looking just the way he wanted. It wasn't like doodling or sketching. These pictures had to be good. Good enough to sell. When both covers and the 14 inside pages had been drawn and inked and pasted into place to make the two master copies, Greg tackled his first printing. The copier he used was his dad's, and it was actually part of the printer that was hooked up to the computer in the family room. It was an inkjet printer, plus a scanner, plus a copier, one of those all-in-one machines. 
It made copies in either black and white or color. Greg had stuffed about 40 ruined pieces of paper into the recycling bin before he figured out how to get all 16 pages imaged copied correctly onto the front and back of one sheet of paper. But finally, he had folded his first perfectly printed sheet, stapled it twice, and trimmed the top, front, and bottom edges, and then, one hot night in the middle of July, Greg stood there in his family room and thumbed through the very first volume of Chunky Comics. It had been a proud moment. Mm -hmm.